Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar, and I'm excited to be bringing you my first in a series of lessons for OnlineDrummer.com. Now what we're going to be doing is we're essentially just going to take a rhythmic journey. We're going to take a beat that starts in 7-8, and we're just going to mess with it. I'm going to take you pretty much through the steps of how I would modify something to come up with something new out of it, make it interesting for myself. So what we're going to start with here is a simple groove in 7-8. Now if you haven't done 7-8 before, you can think about it like a bar of 4-4 four, four, minus an 8th note. So for example, if you're playing a rock beat, just 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Take the last one away. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. If you have a little trouble following that, you might want to check back to one of my videos on time signatures. I'm going to annotate a link to that just up in the top corner. So let's get right to it. Alright, so that's simple enough. Let's add a couple bass drums and an extra snare drum. Alright, let's spice it up further. Okay, so let's take one of my favorite bass drum patterns. Now, we're going to apply this within 7-8, so we're going to be losing a note. The bass drum pattern is if we have quarter note, 2, 3, 4, ba, da, ba, da, da, ba, da. I play this all over the place. Let's cram it into a bar of 7-8, so we're going to lose the last note. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but one of the coolest things about that is that, with the exception of one place within the bar, our bass drum is playing groups of equally spaced 3 16th notes all the way through it. So let's mess with that a little bit. Let's, let's move it around. Alright, so now we're starting to get somewhere with this. Let's take another approach to how we're going to play kind of the same thing. Let's take the snare drums, and instead of playing them where they are, we're going to move the first one over by an eighth note. Now what this is going to do is this gives us two equally spaced notes across our bar of 7-8 for our snare drum backbeat, which almost implies kind of like we're in 4-4, but what else it's doing is it's giving us a 2 over 7 polyrhythm. Now, if you want to hear about this a little bit more in depth, again, I'm going to annotate a link. Check out my polyrhythms video relating to that type of polyrhythm. Let's give it a try. Alright, so now we're starting to sound pretty cool. Let's take the same snare drum spacing, but we're going to pull it back by an eighth note. So we still have the polyrhythm, we still have the predominantly 3 16th spaced bass drum pattern, but it's just going to sound a little bit different. Let's take that same bass drum pattern, but we're going to push it forward by a 16th note. Now, let's take a look at some fills. This first one has got sort of a John Bonham kind of fill to it. We're playing a bunch of groups of sixes and then followed by two sixteenth notes to end off the seven eight.
we're starting to think about specific drummers, let's take a look at, say, a Carter Beaufort style drum fill. Now, some of you might be a little more familiar with that rhythm on the bass drum. That's something that Thomas Hawk might do. Now, what kind of Thomas Hawk reference would this be if I didn't turn that into a groove? Let's do it. So make sure you guys practice these a whole bunch and get really comfortable playing within 7-8 because in the next installment of this video series we're going to add a 16th though. We're going to start playing in 15-16. Now if you want a little head start onto that, you can check out one of the time signature videos that I've already released which covers 16th note bass meters, including 15-16 if I remember correctly. So until next time, subscribe to my channel, check me out on Facebook, and I'll see you guys inside the next video. Bye!